What's going on, everybody? As you can see, I'm kicking it in the mansion tonight. Or this morning, I guess. I'm already wrong. It didn't take long. It usually doesn't. It is December 14th. This is the recap for NBA DFS on uh, Wednesday the 13th. And it went quite well. After all the late news and all the tinkering up until 6.58 last night, it all broke really, really well. Not like really, really well, but like really well. I couldn't be happier. So, living that mansion life again, which I'm pretty happy about. At some point in time, I need to just win like the the million, rent this house for, I don't know, like a couple days and just actually hang out in it. I wouldn't know how to do that, but I would try. It's probably on Airbnb or something. But anyway. Let's get to the good stuff. So, final lineup as of last night was Chris Paul, Andrew Harrison, DeMar DeRozan, Eton Moore, Paul George, Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, Serge Ibaka, Mike Scott, Aaron Baines. Ended up putting up 350.4 fantasy points, um, which is uh, 5.8x as a team, and that's pretty dope. Couldn't be happier. Craziest part of it all, Chris Paul, 2.6% owned in my double up. It's crazy. 2.6. How did that happen? Didn't see that coming at all, but I'll take it. Um, only other crate, only other ownership under 10%. Harrison at 9%, which surprised me. He's been playing really well, and then late news to Tyreek, I would have assumed. I would have assumed he was going to be like 40%, so that was really weird to me. Um, Eton Moore is fine, I get it. And then Mike Scott, 12.7% owned. Um, played like garbage, but I would have thought that that would have jumped too as well to open up some value, but... Guess not. So let's drill down into... Uh, uh, let me show the summary. That's what's more important. So I had $59 in entry fees. I brought back in $103.60, which is a 175% ROI. I am now in this uh, little bankroll tracking period up basically everything from yesterday, which is a 29.2% ROI uh, cumulatively. So that's pretty cool. I like when the green, or when the green line just goes zoop, right to the top. That's the that's the good stuff. Um, yeah, I, I basically won every contest that I was in, save for uh, one five man and uh, one head to head. I think. Yeah, I, I got second in this five man. Oh no, um, that's not the right. I'm actually up more than what this says. I won. Uh, a four dollar ticket to the NBA clutch shot the day after Christmas. It's weird that it comes in that I should have a mechanism to control for that. Technically I'm up $104. Anyway, uh, we'll start a point guard. Um, and this is sort of the, the decision here ended up being sort of made for me at shooting guard and small forward. I realized that, you know, I had two guys at small forward, Giannis and Paul George, that were greatly outpacing um, everyone else at the position. Whereas I saw more value down the line at shooting guard and at point guard. So that made me lock in Giannis, which made me remove Harden, which then I wanted to have exposure to the Rockets, and I didn't want Eric Gordon, so immediately I got to Chris Paul. So, I know Russ was <clears throat> about 25% owned. Uh, he put up 49 in 36 minutes, 4.4x. Um, yeah, it's solid. You're not, like, totally bummed about it, but it's fine. I uh, never really looked at Dame, 3.1x, but then we get to Paul. Chris Paul, huge game. 58.9 fantasy points in 35 minutes, 6.3x at... 2.6% owned. To be able to hit that is ginormous. I wish that I would have been awake for it because 
I would imagine that from the time the Rockets game started, it probably, like, I was, when I went to sleep, I was like 500th out of five something in my double ups because I had Bain, Scott, George, and like Eton, Aaron Harrison, like all these low salary guys playing early. So I was at the bottom of the barrel, and the people that had played like Russ and all the early games were all way ahead of me. But when that Rockets game started, it probably looked like I got shot out of a cannon. <laughs> Just climbing so much on every Chris Paul, every Chris Paul bucket was probably just pew, 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 crazy climbing. Um, you know, John Wall performed pretty well. Uh, twenty-seven fantasy points in twenty-seven minutes. He was on a minutes limit, you know, but he still hit a fantasy point per minute, which you know is good for a guy who's still trying to get back. Obviously, he was a terrible value last night. His salary is still like where it's supposed to be. So, um, I did like Kyrie yesterday. It was just never really in the cards for me. I re- if I wanted to get a part of the Rockets game, there was no way to go to Kyrie. <clears throat> but, you know, 50 and, six, 50 and 32 minutes, 6.3x is great. I didn't really like Lowry, so that looked good. Never really paid attention to Kemba or Payton. Um, Chris Dunn continued to be a really good fantasy player, 5.9x. And then, just to jump down to the, the other biggies... Uh, Jokic got the DNP CD last night, which you know nobody knew after lock. Um, and then with Barton out, that probably did make Jamal Murray look like a much better play. So kudos to the people that that saw that. But 50 fantasy points in 35 minutes at 5,000 salary, 9.8x monster game. Um, he probably was in the winning GPP lineups if I had to guess. And then sliding down, you know, Euless put up 7.1x. Taya Dosich with 6.3x. I didn't really realize that. Good for him. Um, and then I had Andrew Harrison. Uh, once the Tyreek news came out, that gave me a, a low-level punt at point guard. I probably would have ended up with... I probably would have paid out. I probably would have had Bledsoe, 4.7x, um, given everything that needed to happen. But... Harrison, 35 fantasy points in 29 minutes, 8.4x. The Grizzlies are atrocious, but he's actually been decent, which is surprising because he's been incredibly bad for, I don't know, ever, (laughs) I guess. And then we're down into like a group of guys that you probably wouldn't be taking that hit value. Juwan Evans, Jameer, Shabazz Napier, Gary Payton, uh, Larkin, who I didn't even anticipate playing. Same for Napier. Um... And then Felton had 5.6x. But, you know, uh, Russ played well, and he was uh, a chalkier point guard. But, you know, I couldn't be happier. I got 6.3x out of Paul, 8.4x out of Andrew Harrison. You know, almost 100 points out of the two. Less than 10% owned. Doesn't get much better than that. Shooting guard, I went uh, DeRozan and Moore. Um... I thought that I was going to have Malcolm Brogdon here, but I wanted to get a piece of the Pelicans as well, so I transitioned from Brogdon and dropped down 100 to more. 8.1% owned. Um, that worked out perfectly. And then DeRozan was just sort of the guy that I had left after all of the news shook out. I had, you know, I had that salary left to fill um, point guard, shooting guard, shooting guard, and uh, the Chris Paul, DeRozan, Eton Moore combo was the one I liked the most. I liked DeRozan uh, a lot this morning. I was just hoping that he would be the reason that, you know, they would blow out the Suns. But, yeah, DeRozan, big game. So pivoting off of Harden to Giannis proved to be uh, incredibly fruitful. 40 fantasy points for Harden, 31 minutes, 3.4x. Nobody's happy there, uh, except for the people that didn't take him. Oladipo, 36 points in 38 minutes, uh, just got absolutely locked down by Paul George um incredible defense yesterday and you know at, at 10,000 salary he put up 3.6x it's it's just tough his salary is way too high for his offensive performance we get to DeRozan 8 point or $8,800 uh 50 fantasy points in 36 minutes 5.7x take it all day couldn't be happier just absolutely perfect. Um, 
I never really paid attention to Beal now that Wall is out and Beal still has a slightly inflated salary. Uh, Lou Williams and Donovan Mitchell both hit value 5.7x and 6.7x respectively. Um, I thought about Mitchell, but it, I wanted to see how the team would react to having Rodney Hood back and how that would impact uh, Mitchell's minutes and Mitchell's output. Uh, turns out it didn't. <laughs> 6.7x. Uh, Donovan Mitchell didn't really give many shits about it. Um, with AD in at lock, I didn't see the need to take Drew. Um, he's just so much better when one of those two guys is not on the floor. Chris Middleton was uh, heavily owned, 4.7x. That's that's fine. Um, he wasn't the guy that I liked from the Bucks last night. <clears throat> um, CJ was popping a lot in my optimizer, but I don't, he's just... He hadn't been very good lately, uh, but here are 41 points in 41 minutes, 6x. Uh, hopefully that he can get some momentum building, because I really like to roster him a lot. Uh, Batum was supposed to be Jeremy Lamb for me today, but he, all of a sudden he was just probable. So we uh, scratched Lamb, and I didn't want Batum, so 3.8x happens. Marcus Smart actually with a decent game and hit 5x, but this is the only piece that... I wish I would have went to. I don't know why I didn't go a little bit harder for it. I think just probably because they had a pretty poor implied total. And I didn't see the need to force feed it in. But uh, once the Barton news came out, Gary Harris at 5,800 was an absolute steal. And something that I, in hindsight, probably should have prioritized. But I don't know how I would have fit it in. Um, he put up 52.6 fantasy points in 37 minutes. I liked him when Barton was in this morning, so uh, it's it's weird to me that I didn't make that move. 9.1x, just a giant game. He's really good. Um, the Nuggets really do have like an embarrassment of riches. They should be so much better than they are. They really need a consolidation trade because they're they're deep too. They have guys that like that don't even play that are. You know, good rotation basketball players. But they ser- they really desperately need to make like a two for one deal. And then there was a big stack of like no real value. Justin Holiday, you know, Rodney Hood, Waiters, Burks, Gordon, Lamb. Uh, I was looking at Brogdon. That was my step down. Um, Four point two x. I wouldn't have been like mad about his performance, but obviously I prefer getting. Um, <clears throat> Eton Moore's performance of 31 points in 35 minutes, 6.7x. It's a giant swing. I mean, that's 12 points right there. So that's, that's some money that's out that takes me out of quintuple ups and stuff. Um, you're probably not going too, too far down, but these would have been GPP guys. So Abrinas hit 6.2x. Uh, Jody Meeks wasn't in play. Troy Daniels, though, is the biggie. 38.6x in 31 minutes, 11, or 38.6 fantasy points in 31 minutes, 11x, um, that's just giant, and then uh, my boy Wayne, 31 fantasy, 36 fantasy points in 31 minutes, 10.5x, um, when the news that Tyler Johnson was out um, came out, that made Wayne a really solid GPP play, so somebody got rewarded with some weird, like, Troy Daniels, Wayne Ellington stack. Small forward, I went George and Giannis. George was 42% owned, uh, Giannis 51% owned. And that's pretty much... So, I, don't, I know people are like, why are you taking Paul George again? And why are all these people taking Paul George again? Uh, just statistically, he, he came out really well in my projections. Um, you know, Fantasy Cruncher liked him. Um, my weighted fantasy points per minute you know, had him right in line there. So, like, when all of those things are pointing together and a guy, and I expect a guy to be highly owned, I, I don't have a choice, really. I have to take him. I can't go against ownership and something that I think is a good play on paper. So that's why I end up with it. And in cash, it's not a huge deal because at 42%, even if he does provide a 3.5x, it's not murdering me like it would if I tried to make a change and was wrong. Um... So, like I said before, I saw George and Giannis as the on-paper best dudes at small forward, so that's why I pivoted off of Harden. Uh, Giannis put up 64.8 in 41 minutes, 5.4x. Just, I, I couldn't be happier. That's perfect. 
It's just absolutely perfect. That's exactly what you need from a guy at that salary. Uh, TJ Warren tanked 2.6x. Now, Paul George, um, offensively, George, Russ, Mello, these guys couldn't make a bucket, but uh, George played exceptional defense. Um, so from a game perspective, he was a lot better than he was in a fantasy perspective. Uh, 3.5x, not the best, but at that ownership, it's not gonna. I'm not super upset about it. If I didn't expect him to be highly owned, I probably would have ended up on Jonathan Simmons, um, just because of all of the Orlando news. Um, he had 39 points in 38 minutes, which was 6x. Jalen Brown with a big one, 6.8x. MKG, another big game, so that's two in the last three, or maybe back-to-back, I can't really remember. 7.8x. Um, I didn't really see anybody else in that other area. David Nawaba, I guess, was okay, at, uh, but he ended up putting up 3.1x, which isn't very good. Ubre and Boyan both hit value. Um, I didn't see people were touting Parsons. He got to 26 minutes, which is good. Um, it's good to see him being able to stretch out, but 18 fantasy points, 4.1x. Um, that wasn't really the best. Uh, I did think about Wilson Chandler stepping all the way down to Wilson Chandler, um, but I, I didn't really know how to make that move. might have been something I entertained uh, if I ended up going with Harden. But he put up 6.8x. The guy you wanted to have here, the guy that I uh, outwardly disregarded almost immediately yesterday, even knowing that he had the minutes. Mario Hazonia, 42.8 fantasy points in 34 minutes, 11.6x, $3,700. Um, he was like 25, 30% owned, something like that. Just monster game out of Hazonia. That's probably what they were thinking they were going to get from him two plus years ago when they drafted him um he's just been so bad as an nba player that him coming in and getting 30 minutes just didn't seem like a really amazing play to me he's been not very good um so i don't regret passing on him other than just missing out on the points uh that's really all you needed at small forward um as long as you could avoid tj warren basically you were probably okay Power forward. Uh, I went with Abaka and Mike Scott. Uh, I, would, I had Abaka locked most of the day. So did most of pe- most of the people. Forty nine percent owned. And then um, Mike Scott news. Uh, Markeith Morris got scratched at like six forty five. Sorry, I need some coffee. Oh, there's no sweetener in there. Ah, oh well. Uh, Mike, Mike Scott became a play once Markeith got scratched, and they said that he was going to start. You know, it's just uh, it's just a straight punt. 3900 in salary, but, you know, not the best performance, unfortunately. Uh, Markinen ended up being a late scratch, so I hope everybody was able to avoid that. I never really heard much talk on power forward. Like, you know, people were nervous about AD. He put up 4.5x, but, like, he was hard, he was hard to roster. Um, Mellow popped for me a little couple times. I didn't have any interest in it. 3.9x. Thad, on the other hand, he's somebody I usually end up seeing at power forward. Um, he just sort of grades out really well for me regularly. Um, wasn't going to be a, that sort of scenario here. 8.5x, 53.5 fantasy points in 38 minutes. I think he had like a really overwhelming amount of steals. 5, 6, 7, something like that. But a lot of value here at the top. Uh, James Johnson, 5.3x. But Abaka, who I thought looked great. I thought it was a great matchup for him. Um, he's been playing really well, and he continued that. 41 fantasy points in 34 minutes. Uh, 7.1x. Just did exactly what I needed. Uh, Aminu hit value. John Henson hit value. Shout out, Dark Blue. Uh, Jamichael Green hit value. Um, so I was on favors uh, pretty heavily in the morning and had him in my lineup up until the Markeith Morris news. And uh, he finished with 19 fantasy points in 30 minutes, 3.7x. Uh, he basically just didn't shoot. I think he had like three shot attempts, which is weird, but he had 10 boards. That's a, that's a great game. I just would never expect him to get three shot attempts. Like, go bear back, no go bear. Um... 
you would just expect like if he's gonna play 30 minutes 10 boards I'm happy with you know I would still expect 12 points from him and if that's the case you know he's at value um it's just a really really odd offensive game so I don't necessarily hate the play even though it didn't come out um that's just a really weird shot line for him uh Miritich 43.8 in 35 minutes 9.1 x I don't he was like 20 percent owned in a in, I think it was one of the double ups that I looked at how the hell does anybody land on that Markkanen was in when lineups locked how could you even imagine taking Miritich I had him projected for 21 minutes before that good for you guys Portis hit value, surprise, surprise, 5.4x. Again, once uh, Markkanen was out, it was a no-brainer. Um, and then the only other place of value the, through the rest of power forward was Jeremy Grant, who hit 7x in 17 minutes. So, crazy stuff. Um, you really just needed to avoid the Markkanen bomb and uh, hope that you didn't have Kelly Olynyk. I guess. There weren't too many uh, out-and-out craters. Um you know, Marvin Williams, Sabonis, Marquise Chris, but those aren't guys you're probably rostering in cash. And finally at center, I went Baines, 50% owned. Uh, I mean, with Horford out, he became the punt play. I really wanted to see Jokic be in. Now, ultimately, he didn't play, but that didn't really matter to me. I just wanted him to be on the roster. Um, that eliminates some of the small ball that the Nuggets would play. And the more that Jokic plays, in theory, the more that they're going to need a big body like Baines. Now, Jokic ended up getting the DNP CD, so it doesn't matter. Um, I never looked at Boogie. Uh, his salary is you know, based on ha not having AD for a while, so he should really be like 10-5 when AD is playing. So... That's just a little bit too expensive, especially with... I mean, you look at all those green dots. Center value was out of control last night. Um, you know, Vooch put up 5x. Dwight Howard, 6x. DeAndre Jordan, 7x. Been playing really well lately. Salary's going to go up. Rudy Gobert, Clint Capella, both just under 5x. They would have been the bad plays. Um, although Miles Turner and Marcus Gasol were both, you know, bad plays. But Gasol just has no help. It's too hard for him right now. Adams hit 6x. Monroe hit 6.5x. Monroe looked like a great mid-tier center yesterday. When you know that uh, Tyson Chandler is sitting, um, you know, M Monroe should eat. And he played five more minutes than I expected, but 6.5x, huge. Rolo, 6.8. Jonas, 7x. Shout out Dark Blue. Dude, <laughs> calling out decent GVP plays and starting to freak me out. Mason Plumlee, 6x. Alex Len, 7.3x. Marcin Gortat, 6.8x. Uh, he's probably somebody... Uh, if Baines news... If Baines didn't exist last night, if, if Horford's playing, I have a feeling that I'm on Vooch at center. When that Markeith Morris news comes out, and then the Jan Mahinmi news comes out as well, um, I would have almost assuredly fired up Marcin Gortat and moved shit around so i'm anxious to see what or not anxious to see but i'm curious to see what i'm not curious to see anything either what the fuck am i saying it would have been cool um to see a lineup like that because it would have been so different than what i actually had um and then you get baines at 7x at 3600 uh for me it was a no-brainer in cash um choosing between all of those amazing centers like that whole from Adams, Capella, Gobert, Jordan, Gasol, Turner, Howard, Vooch. That, you know, that's, that's so many guys that you have to sift through. And instead of just being like, done, Aaron Baines, we'll take that extra salary and get Giannis. Or we'll take that extra salary and get Chris Paul. It was easy. Um, so yeah, that's where I ended up. 350 fantasy points in 29, or 298 minutes. Uh, almost spot on with the minutes you know 15 is not I, I think that's pretty good over nine guys but the biggest takeaway is I am now officially up uh, pretty solidly in this bankroll management exercise I'll take it three winning nights in the last four this one obviously a very big one um, 
I'm in the positive in all tournament types except for three-man tournaments where I'm down 50 cents, <laughs> which is funny. Um, but, yeah, it, it was just great. It was a great night. So that's the recap. Um, like this video if you liked it. You know, Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, check out Patreon. Um, I'll do another uh, live stream tonight before lock, probably at 6.30. Uh, lock is at 7.30 tonight. Uh, we had a huge crew last night, 350 or so people. Um, we got flash mobbed, which was crazy. And I didn't see coming, and it made me angry at the time, and now I think back and it's funny. <laughs> I just wasn't ready for it, so they did their job. But uh, strategy video will be out again this morning, and um, let's, keep this, uh, let's keep this momentum going. Have a good day, guys.